I am David Kay, the CEO of the American Health Law Association. Each year, the Board of Directors approves a slate of esteemed individuals selected by the Fellows Coordinating Council as AHLA Fellows. These longtime members have shown a commitment to the association through their participation as speakers, authors, mentors, and leaders. They are regarded as one of the top health law professionals in the legal community and all have been actively participating at AHLA and the health law profession for 15 or more years. While the bios for these fellows are posted on AHLA's website, I want to give you the chance to hear from them personally and learn more about why they deserve the fellow's honor. The 2023 fellows class includes eight exceptional individuals. Today, I have the distinct honor to be speaking with Claire Turcott. Claire, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I wanna start off with how does it feel to be an AHLA fellow? Well, honestly, David, I'm humbled and grateful to be included with such a, a tremendous group. Um, you know, I've known many of the fellows over the years, including several members of the 2023 class, and I'm truly honored to be um, included in that group. Well, it is an honor, very well deserved. I want to take you back a little bit to help the listening audience learn a little more about your journey. Why did you go to law school and why did you select health law as a career area? Well, I chose law school after working for a couple of years after college, and I, I selected law school because I wanted to pursue a profession um, that would, you know, a path that would allow me a lifelong professional career. And I thought it suited my abilities and was a flexible option. So if I ended up deciding that I didn't want to practice law, I could certainly do other things with a law degree. Um, prior to law school, I did um, healthcare consulting and was interested in policy. And so I thought I could certainly pursue both of those areas as well as practicing law if I opted to do that. Um, I chose healthcare because I, um, I grew up in a medical family. My father was an academic physician and certainly grew up a lot around a lot of um, physicians in that uh, way. And so I just became interested in the field. And during college, I took a couple of courses in, in health policy and that kind of fueled my interest in healthcare. So I picked that back up uh, in my practice once I started practicing law. That's great. And one of the stories I think embedded in that, as you said, you, know, you went there after, after working a little bit, is it's never too late. So for our audience, as they, as they listen and contemplate careers in the law and, and even a focus in health law, Sometimes the stars do align. Absolutely. So how has AHLA helped you remain connected with your health law colleagues? Well, AHLA has been a tremendous uh, opportunity to connect with colleagues in the healthcare and health law field. Um, gosh, I have so many experiences I could share. One was after I moved from the West Coast to the East Coast at an AHLA conference, um, I just reached out to someone from my prior law firm who was involved in the AHLA leadership. And that person was so generous to have lunch with me at the conference and invited me to participate on a committee um, that was really one of the main uh, starting points for my AHLA career. Um, and really, whenever I have reached out to people, whether it be um, just asking a question on the listserv, which I did uh, many times over the years, to attending a conference, people have been very generous with their time. Um, so AHLA has been invaluable though, that way. So that, that leads me into the next question, which is if a new AHLA member asked you how to get involved in the association, what would you tell them? Well, this actually happened just recently. I was at the Transactions Conference in April and I was um, out with a couple of my longtime AHLA friends at the end of the evening and a young new member came up to our group and basically asked that, you know, should I get involved? How could I get involved? And really around the whole group, 
uh, everyone was very encouraging. I would always encourage somebody to join AHLA and to uh, recognize that it really is an organization that welcomes young people as volunteers. So um, I would encourage people to simply introduce themselves to leaders like this young person did and ask them how they could get involved. Um, sign up for the, you know, fill out the call for volunteers forms and, and um, you know, really just ask for opportunities. Try to write an article or find someone to co-present with. Um, that's been a great opportunity that I certainly pursued. Well, that's great advice. And I, I'm, I'm glad you told the story of that recent experience. <laughs> with that yeah. experience. It, it shows, you know, that we are still that open and inviting um, community that you spoke of when you first joined and became active. Mm -hmm. Yeah, open is a word that I always use in describing AHLA. I have found it to be just a very open organization. I mean, when I um, met people at in-person conferences who I consider to be sort of legends in the, in the field, they were really universally very interested in meeting me as just another healthcare attorney among many. And um, a lot of those people have become my friends. So it's been a great experience. Great, I'm glad you shared that with us. Um, looking back though, even on your own career, if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, I would say to be a little more self-confident early on and um, recognize that you do have something to offer, even if you aren't yet accomplished. Um, also that a career is truly a lifelong journey. You know, it's, a, it's the marathon, not the race. And that doing small things along the way can sort of add up to something. Um, take that chance opportunity, try to participate in things, attend things. Um, you never know when that chance meeting, that person you meet somewhere is gonna end up impacting your life. Um, and I've definitely had those kinds of opportunities where just getting to know somebody turned into the next thing. I think you're sharing some powerful messages here. Confidence in oneself and one's abilities, staying connected and realizing that our careers it's a journey. It's not just tomorrow. Um, it's many tomorrows. That's a good message to share with our listening audience. Thank you for that. Now, I, I, I wonder, as you think back of your career, what has been the accomplishment you are most proud of and why? Well, I would put being recognized as an HLA fellow right up there at the top of the list. Um, again, you know, I I, I just, I've known many of the fellows over the years and really um, wouldn't have really counted myself <laughs> as among them necessarily. Um, so I'm, I'm certainly um, proud of that accomplishment. I think also challenging myself to do some things that maybe have led me uh, here. You know, some of those were, were kind of milestones like um, giving a presentation at the AHLA annual meeting with with individuals who, again, were really accomplished people, that they were willing to do that with me um, and that I succeeded in doing that. That was a big accomplishment. Um, other things are, you know, having the opportunity to mentor people. Uh, I'm thinking of a particular AHLA friend who um, was in the leadership development program in the practice group I was with, and she and I have stayed connected and um, she's reached out to me for career advice multiple times, and I, you know, I'm really proud of that, that, that she saw me as a mentor. Well, that's great. And, and let us not forget, Claire, you are also one of the AHLA stars. <laughs> Thank Let's you. Get that. Can you share with us what traits you feel are most important in being an effective health lawyer? Yes, certainly. I think being curious is important. Um, being open to learning new things, being willing to challenge yourself, uh, being a lifelong learner, 
um, because health law is ever changing. Um, you, you can't always predict where where things are going to go in the industry and the in the law. And so um, I have found being someone who likes to really dig in and learn new things to be valuable. Um, being a problem solver, I really consider my legal practice first and foremost being a problem solving role, trying to help clients get where they want to go. <laughs> um, sometimes the question they ask isn't actually, uh, or, or the, 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 the idea that they have isn't actually what we end up doing. Um, so it's important to be collaborative, ask questions, listen. And being a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, those, are, those are great messages for, for the younger uh, or folks entering, not just the law, but I think what you're sharing is uh, anyone is entering a new profession. Those are very mm -hmm. key points to keep in mind. Um, as we've noted in, in your selection as a fellow, you've had a very distinguished career. I suspect it wasn't all work and no play. So what did you do for fun? How did you have balance in your life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, work-life balance is always um, a goal that, that, that maybe we don't all achieve all the time. Um, I think most recently, for about the last 10 years, um, I've become a, a regular tennis player. And so I, I, I play a lot of tennis and I found that to be a nice departure from my work life. Um, and not only great, you know, from a physical standpoint, but a social standpoint, because I've had the opportunity through tennis to meet many, many people in my community that I really wouldn't have met otherwise. Um, and it's kind of a great leveler. You know, you could be playing tennis with somebody who is very accomplished in their field, but when you're on the tennis court, that's not what it's about. So, um, so it's, it, and it's also um, uh, kind of pushed me to be more competitive uh, because it's a win, it's a win lose game. <laughs> so um, that wasn't really my natural instinct, but um, so it, it's challenged me in a lot of new ways. It's been a growth opportunity and a fun thing to do. And you started this 10 years ago. This wasn't something you did as a child. No, um, I, yeah, I, I started it as an adult and I wasn't really naturally gifted. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Um, it's kind of like people who play golf, you know, and they, it, it, it's frustrating at times, um, but lots of fun. And um, I've kind of worked my way into to being able to play. That sounds good. And I think it's an important message for all of us to realize how important it is to have balance, have something else um, mm -hmm. focus our attention on. Um, Claire, it's been a wonderful treat to get a chance to talk to you today, to get to thank you for being so powerful and wonderful for the association, for being a strong mentor and giver to the association, and to, and to honor you as being an AHLA fellow. So thank you, Claire. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, David. It's been my pleasure.